May 15, 2022, Mountain Air, New Mexico. Officer Woodard is at it again. Okay. Open up the door. Right I don't have to open my door if I don't want to. Just come over here. Get over there to the side. Just come over here. Just get over there to the side right now. You can't do that. Chris, come down here and talk to them. Get out of my house. Get out of the way. Get That's illegal. Stop, you can't stop, do that. Stop. Today, he's decided that he will batter a woman and force his way into her home with no warrant. He later tells the victim's boyfriend that he didn't do what he did and that he should not try to get his body camera and see for himself. He should just take Woodard's word for it. What did she say? That whenever you got here, yeah. You didn't ask no questions. You grabbed her and ripped her shirt. Yeah. Well, you were upstairs, right? Yeah. And no one grabbed anybody by a shirt. Yeah, that's And no did. one pushed anybody to the floor, right? That's illegal. Stop, you can't stop. do that. Yeah. I'd and you don't have to worry about looking at my repeller camera. You can look at it. Yeah. You know, if somebody goes to jail, perfectly fine. But that's not your responsibility to see if the police are doing something wrong. That's what I Doesn't make any sense, right? In case you don't remember who Officer Woodard is, I previously did a video on him where he points a taser at a man who tried to have a conversation with him. At that time, he was just an officer, but for his bad behavior, Chief Reyes promoted him to sergeant rather than terminating him. Small Town Audit 48 has been documenting all the nonsense going on in Mountain Air under Police Chief Reyes, including a number of incidents where Officer Woodard shows us that he's an unglued, unstable liability to Mountain Air. He's documented multiple town hall meetings where citizens have come and expressed their concerns about the dangerously poor leadership of Chief Reyes to Mayor Pierre. Peter Nieto, and council members. He's documented meetings where an EMS worker for the town accuses Chief Reyes of sexual harassment, slander, and libel. But it seems that no matter what Officer Woodard does, or how many times Chief Reyes promotes him for abusing people, Peter Nieto seems to stand behind them every time. Because they're still here. No, nobody called he for a domestic. He told me that you called for Put oh, the phone did. down. Put don't the phone down. Don't touch hey. me. Put the phone don't down. Don't touch me. Stop. What's your name? You stop. 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 What the fuck is wrong with you? We're not doing anything. There was no reason for that. And while other cops know that Officer Woodard's need to escalate every single situation to violence puts them in danger too, they don't want to address it because that would be crossing the thin blue line. That is not okay. I don't want to address that. That is not Okay. I don't want to address that. That's right, we can all see that newly promoted Sergeant Woodard is a violent animal, but nobody wants to address it. And it's not as if Brent Woodard's violent behavior is something new. It's a pattern. Years ago, when he worked at Bosky Farms Police Department, he was accused of battering an underage kid at a wrestling practice. Last month, Bosky Farms Police Sergeant Brent Woodard was at a wrestling practice at Valencia High School. Investigators say Woodard, who was off-duty at the time, stepped on a student's foot, grabbed him, and shook him. New Mexico court records show two weeks ago Woodard pled no contest to two counts of battery, a misdemeanor. He is still on the job and has not been disciplined. And the pattern of illegal, unlawful, physical abuse against innocent people by Brent Woodard continues because, like the officer that was with him that day, nobody wants to address it. It seems the problem the town had with the old police chief is that he allegedly refused to fight the crime in the town. It seems that the problem with the new police chief is that he allows and even seems to encourage Officer Woodard illegally and unlawfully battering people and breaking into people's homes without warrants. Seems to me there ought to be a balance somewhere where you arrest people for committing crimes against other people without violating people, making you the bad guy. Brent Woodard is still on a probationary period with the Mountain Air Police Department. As of today, they can still get rid of him with or without cause. Two weeks from now, that's going to be a lot more difficult. They need to act now. The Mountain Air Police were called out to this location because there was a verbal argument between two people. They showed up to make sure that the verbal argument hadn't become physical. As we can see, the female officer does an excellent job of investigating the situation without escalating or trying to push things to violence. She's in the process of calmly getting both alleged parties to come out so that she can lay eyes on them and make sure that nobody's been physically injured. Her demeanor is so cool, calm, and collected, and she's about to get the female to tell the male to come outside without having to resort to violence. But then Officer Woodard interjects himself. Is he inside? Yeah. Does he want to talk? Who is he? What's his name? Chris. Chris. I have no idea who that is. Poseidon! Well, when we get a call, 
that there is a domestic violence. I we, promise you nothing happened. We weren't okay. fighting or nothing. I just need to talk to him and make sure that he has the same thing, that his statement's the same as yours. The truth is that there had been a verbal altercation between this woman and her significant other, but nobody had laid hands on anyone, and nobody had been physically hurt. Until Officer Woodard got here. Officer Woodard turned a non-violent incident into a violent one, and then continued to escalate. Notice that before Officer Woodard battered this woman, her shirt was not ripped. Then see it again on the female's body cam, almost ripped completely off of her body. Okay. Who's in the okay? house? Huh? Open up the door. Okay. Don't close the door. Open up the door right now. My house is a mess. I don't have to open, open up the door right, right now. I have to open my door if Get I over have there. to. Get up, stand no. over there to the side. That's illegal. You can't stand over there to the side you right now. Do that. Chris! Come down here and talk to them. Get out of my house. Get out of the way. Get That's out of the way. Illegal. Get you out of the way. You can't fucking just walk in Come here. Come here. Come here. Come outside. You can't do that. Go over there. What's happening? Put the phone down. Put the phone down. Go over there. Go over there. Go over there. Do not call anybody on that phone. Get outside now. Get outside. Get outside. We're called to a domestic. Stop! Stop. Sit down on the floor. Sit down on the floor. Look at me with that camera, please. Go ahead. Oh my God. Hey, okay, shut up! We're here for a domestic. You can't tell us what to do. Where? The neighbors over there were just fighting. Why aren't you saying that then off the bat? Why aren't you saying that off right off the bat? Did you call for a domestic or they? Give me your ID. Listen to me. Did you call for a domestic? No. He just told me that you called for. Put the phone down. Put the phone down. Don't touch me. Put the phone down. Don't touch me. Stop. You need to okay. stop. 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 Stay down! What the fuck is wrong with you? You sure to go in? Okay, yes sir. Stand up. We're Stand up. I tell you to do something, you fucking do it. What the fuck is wrong with you? Put your hands behind your back. Sit down now. Sit down. Did you call for a domestic? No, sir, we didn't. Do not get up again. We were Why did you guys. tell me there's a domestic over there then? We were watching those people fight. Why didn't you say that? Come here. Jesus Christ, lady, come here. No. Did you call for a domestic? No, Did you say that there was a domestic over there? No, we didn't. Why is he saying there's a domestic over there? Because I don't know. We, we, just, were, we, we, were, we were just outside. We just walked inside and you guys pulled up. Yeah, man, they took the phone now. Later on, with Sergeant Woodard and his violent tendencies removed from the situation, the female officer is able to de-escalate again well, and communicate right now, with the female to find out what actually happened. You're upset? Wait, I'm, Be nothing upset, was okay. happening. I'm sorry. I'm, okay. Nothing was happening. I promise. We were just arguing, and that was the end of it. We can't. We were walking outside. Okay. They were calmly walking inside. That was the end of it. We've, we've been having a little bit of trouble lately, and we, we're not fighting. We don't hit each other. We don't touch each other. We were just arguing. We were just arguing. Well, you argued loud enough to get her attention. I know, and these and people don't mind their own business anyway. So, if they, these people probably call the cops. So normally, in a situation like this, let's say we come back here again, mm -hmm. um, and we know that there's two people inside, we'd like to at least talk to both of you. Okay, because so if my whole family was here, you would like to talk to my whole family? I'm just curious. Yeah, if the domestic violence or an incident happened here, yeah, just okay. so everybody okay. can, well, like, just... for future notice, just, I know, because before, I've, I've been in a domestic relationship before, and they used to call the cops on us, like, once a week, so I know how this goes, and... <clears throat> mostly, I would just want to make... talk to him before, so... I mean, not him, but the guy I was with before, like, so I didn't think he had to come out here. Well, every cop does do things differently. I like to talk to, um... The both parties. Okay. I like to at least separate you guys. Okay. So I can make sure that you are okay, um, he is okay, and um, whatever stories that you guys give. Okay. But that's usually what it, how it happens. Okay. And if our stories don't line up, I get it. I've, I've been there before. <clears throat> Got arrested for something like this before because my kid's dad used to hit me and we used to fight a lot. That's what all these scratches and shit are for. Because we used to fight a lot. And I bet you're tired of fighting. Yep. So we weren't fighting. I promise you, we weren't. It's okay. It's, it's okay. It really is okay. Cry. I'm sorry. But we weren't, we weren't fighting like that. I promise you. 
I don't see any apparent injuries that and were associated. He just, um, he just ripped my shirt. Yes. And it, so. Th that I did. It's perfectly clear that nothing physical happened here until Officer Woodard arrived and battered her and ripped her shirt. Officer Woodard's need to escalate to violence, to control everyone and everything on every scene that he shows up on, puts everyone in danger, including other officers who have the displeasure of having to work with him. In New Mexico case law in 1977, State v. Crawl, the court determined that citizens have a right to defend themselves against violent attacks, even from police officers. It seems to me that with the consistent pattern of Officer Woodard's violent, unlawful, and illegal behavior, it's only a matter of time before things boil over and become seriously tragic. If you want, you could go change your shirt if you feel more comfortable, okay? The female officer already knows at this point that nobody is suspected of a crime and therefore she can't detain this woman. That's why she tells her that she's free to go in and out of the house, make phone calls, do whatever she wants. At this point, she's just waiting for her completely out of control partner, Sergeant Woodard, to also decide that he's done. But Sergeant Woodard is going to spend the next hour terrorizing her boyfriend and trying to fabricate a crime when he's the only one that committed a crime. And by the way, you're free if you want to talk to your in-laws, go inside. Okay. This is fucking ridiculous. We come here to help people and you lie. Because you're lying. Get over there. Go stand over there now. Chris, go stand over there. You have no right to grab somebody, especially if I was talking to her calmly. You have no right. Because you're lying. And don't, I, I have no right. Lying. Don't talk back to me right now. No, okay? I don't care if I'm lying. You have no right to grab somebody. I 100% like This up. is my house. This is private okay. property. We were Chris, doing nothing wrong. Come here. Chris, I'm going to take her to fucking jail. Go stand by that car. Go over here. Officer Woodard then takes his male victim into his car so that he can be alone with him and tries to convince him that he did not grab his girlfriend and push her, ripping her shirt. What did she say? That whenever you got here, yeah. You didn't ask no questions. You grabbed her and ripped her shirt. And yeah. Well, you were upstairs, right? Yeah. And no one grabbed anybody by a shirt. Yeah, that's for sure. And no one pushed anybody to the floor, right? That's illegal. Stop, you can't stop. do that. Yeah. I'd and you don't have to worry about looking at my repeller camera. You can look at it. Yeah. You know, if somebody goes to jail, perfectly fine. But that's not your responsibility to see if the police are doing something wrong. That, that's what it doesn't make any sense, right? And no one grabbed anybody by a shirt. Yeah, that's and no one pushed anybody to the floor, right? That's stop, illegal. Stop, you can't stop, do that. Stop. In the next video, we'll go over what newly promoted Sergeant Woodard says over the next hour. He tries to convince them that he didn't grab the female and push her, ripping her shirt. He tries to convince them that the female calling and asking people to come and record Officer Woodard constitutes interference. He even talks to both of his victims separately, trying to pit them against each other. He yells at Chris for 30 minutes about how his parents record the police and even get body cam footage from him, and that they shouldn't be allowed to do it unless he thinks they should. All of my videos of this incident will be cut down for time, but if you want to see the entire interaction uncut and unedited, head over to Small Town Audit 48 on YouTube, where two and a half hours of uncut raw body cam footage from this incident have already been uploaded.